Hi, I'm Mike Edwards. The website is DIY Doctor, and uh, today we're going to be talking about um, how to install an outside tap as part of our series um, on domestic hot and cold water and domestic central heating. Um, in this particular house, the, the cold water valve has been installed in a separate compartment within the kitchen units, largely because in most houses it's in the cupboard under the sink, which is full of cleaning equipment. Uh, you can't get to it, the plumber can't get to it, and that's if you can find it. Um, so we've deliberately put magnetic catches on this cupboard so that we've got a panel that can be easily removed and we can get to something that we know we can operate quite easily because there's nothing in the way. Now the water comes up through the floor um, through an inch and a quarter polythene pipe, normally blue, in fact most of the time blue polythene pipe, um, and it then goes through um, an adapter to take it to 15 millimeter copper. The 15 millimeter copper pipe goes across the floor and you can see it's firmly fixed to a batten which in turn is fixed to the floor so there's no movement in the pipe. Sometimes the pipes move and that causes a juddering and a knocking that you can hear in the house. Um, when the water pressure first arrives and it goes up then to a normal stopcock okay now this stopcock controls all of the water the cold water coming into your house um, and because the hot the water the cold water is only heated after it's come into the house it's logical to say that this tap controls all of the water in your house so it's a very 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 important valve it must be kept warm and it must be checked, I would say, at least once a month just to turn it on and off to make sure it stays free all of the time. When you do turn it off and you turn it off fully and the water stops running, turn it backwards about a quarter of a turn so that no water is coming in but it's not jammed up against its washer to stop the water um, coming in. Now that gives you a little bit of movement in the head of the tap so that if it does seize at any point, it can be moved both ways. So when turning it off, turn it all the way off tight and then a quarter of a turn back again to give you some freedom. Now it goes from, from that valve, in this case, it goes up to feed the, the, the cold water going into the house. But on the way, um, it's interrupted with a T-junction just here to feed a tap on the outside. Now another valve has been inserted between the stopcock and the outside tap which allows us to isolate the outside tap. Um, in between that valve and the tap there's a double check valve which you'll hear me talk a little bit more about in a moment. But that stopcock is exactly the same as that one, operates in the same way so when it's turned fully off turn it a quarter turn back again and that isolates the water from going to the outside tap. Now, the, 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 the time that this comes into effect most is during the winter, when the, the outside tap should be isolated by turning this valve fully off, and then you should open the outside tap fully to allow any water in the pipes to drain out. Um, and that stops the situation that we hear so much about on DIY Doctor, is a split pipe going to my outside tap. So it's isolated from the inside, the tap's open on the outside, the water's drained off so there's no water in there to freeze. So that's how we install an outside tap. It's a simple T connection as the pipe rises up into the house, it's called the rising main. It's teed into the outside tap with a valve there that you can see. You can also see within this cupboard, all of these valves are labelled. We'll show you the little labels in a moment. Um, they're very, very easy. They're, they're pennies to buy um, and it's so much simpler when somebody comes into your house and they have anything to do with the water. It could be a plumber, um, it could be a, a wife or a husband or whatever. They can tell by the label exactly which valves serve which pipes and which systems. So very, very good idea just to label them. It takes five minutes um, and can save you a fortune. So we've moved on to the actual outside tap itself um, and in between the stopcock that you saw inside and this tap there's what's called a double check valve now if we connect a hose pipe or something to this tap and we're running water out into the road or cleaning the car or whatever we're doing um, and we turn the tap off and it's not working properly then a siphon effect can occur where the water is actually sucked back up the, the pipe and, and back into the system 
Now a double check valve actually prevents that happening and in the regulations I think Rob is it's now um, you have to have it. Oh, yeah. yeah, you, ha you have to have a double check valve within this system. Okay, so we can see that the feed to the tap comes through the wall. Um, this is sealed with a flexible sealer so that if the pipe expands a little bit in the in the in the summer contracts a little bit in the cold it's allowed to move a little bit it's not it's not tight in there there's a sleeve it runs through a sleeve to give it a little bit of flexibility allows it to move a bit so it doesn't crack fixed to the wall solidly um, and you know quite simply operates as you would expect any tap to operate again when you turn it on and off again turn it fully off but then just give it a little tweak so that no water's coming out but it's not quite tight up against the washer um, that means that if it does jam at any point you can actually turn it both ways rather than trying to just turn a jam tap one way which is asking for you to break this spindle um, and wreck the tap completely